You know, uh, it is great to be back. It's great to be back with the Freedom, the Faith and Freedom Coalition. I just tell you, uh, you've come to Milwaukee, we've come to DC every year. It is just so nice to see so many friends in faith. Ralph and this entire organization, including everybody in this room, has been so critical to all of our success. When this conference started in 2009, I was there. Ralph turned it the road to the majority. It was a lofty goal for sure. And it was one that it took some time to follow through on. But guess what? We made a ton of progress. In 2010, we won back the House. Then, it took four years. In 2014, we captured the Senate. And then finally, finally, we took back the White House in 2016. So for all of you, for everyone that has been with us the whole way, you know that the road to this majority was long and it was bumpy. But because of your effort, because of your relentlessness, and because of your belief that we can have a better, a freer, a more faithful country, we are hard at work in Washington today as that unified majority party. Thank you for that. <laughs> but I gotta say, we didn't want this majority just to have this majority, just so we could sit on our hands. We asked for this majority so we could make it work. We outlined exactly what we would do with control of government, and we have been spending the last 18 months making good on those promises. We are now more than a full year into having Justice Neil Gorsuch on the United States Supreme Court. And he has been exactly what he said he would be, an independent judge that interprets the Constitution for what it says and not what he wants it to mean. What an immeasurable victory his position on the court is for every American who values their civil rights. You know, we also promised that we would champion free markets and empower people by reforming the tax code for the first time in more than three decades, and we got that done too. <clears throat> the benefits of this law are widespread. The benefits of this law and what it means on the surface is, 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 is it's more than that just families get to keep more of their own money. So instead of you know, giving what you work hard for to bureaucrats in DC, you'll be able to make a down payment on your children's future. You can make a, a needed home improvement. You can take a family vacation. You can steer resources to a charity or a cause that personally motivates you. Tax reform may appear to be fiscal legislation that empowers America's economy to move forward, but th this law, it's much more than that. In so many ways, this was moral legislation. You know why? It's our government telling citizens that they deserve to keep more of what they earn. It's their money in the first place. That's an important principle. It's Washington saying, finally, that you no longer need to be stifled by a burdensome tax code that works against you. And thanks to what we did as a majority, Millions of families will have more freedom to do what they want with their own hard-earned money. And not only that, but as a part of the legislation that we established, we've got opportunity zones and social impact bonds. This is something I want you to take a look at what this is, because this will inject real dollars from the private sector into some of our country's most impoverished areas. With those new provisions, these new laws, we will be meeting a calling that we all aspire to by helping those around us who are unable to help themselves. I worked on this, this idea for 25 years when I used to work for Jack Kemp. This is conservatism at its best in fighting to get people out of poverty onto the ladder of life. This is the kind of thing that makes fighting for a majority worth it. We've done so much more than that with our unified government. Big picture items that we talked about for years are now being passed by Congress and signed into law by our President Donald Trump. In all, the House has advanced more than 500 bills in the last year and a half. It's an incredible pace. And we just had a senator who, who's, who's part of the solution, but 
<laughs> Some of these things get a little hung up in the Senate. <laughs> Don't ask a guy in the House about the filibuster. <laughs> but irrespective of all those bills that we've passed and many that are still over the Senate, we're racking up policy wins that people in this room have been working for for so long. <clears throat> Ralph mentioned it. Earlier this year, we passed the largest crackdown ever on human and sex trafficking in the United States. That's law. I mean, the stories that you hear from these victims are abhorrent. And our principles tell us that we have an obligation to uphold the importance of every life. We are doing that with this legislation. We're also combating the awful opioid epidemic that's dividing families and hurting precious people in this country. We're funding programs that expand access to treatment and recovery efforts. We're enabling states to attack this emergency head on. And we're gonna keep pressing this issue and we're gonna keep fighting to save lives, putting, to put an end to this crisis. And we're not just prioritizing our interests and our values here at home, we're doing it abroad. This unified government recommitted America's unwavering support for our closest ally in the Middle East, Israel. <laughs> just, just think back a couple years ago. No longer do leaders like Bibi Netanyahu have to question where America is on the big issues. We stand with Israel unapologetically. <laughs> Earlier this year, the president proved that by moving our embassy to its rightful home in the capital city of Jerusalem. In Congress, after years of work, we were able to make the Taylor Force Act the law of the land. This freezes any aid from going to the Palestinian Authority if they continue to support terrorist groups like Hamas and finance terrorism. Israel is our friend and our partner. America is stronger when our bond with Israel is stronger. That's what this new majority does. And we're making sure that our country can project strength internationally by restoring critical funding to our military. Our majority gave Secretary Mattis the exact funding that he requested, which is what our troops deserve and what we need to do to keep America safe. Mm. And guess what? Our troops deserve the best medical care when they come home, which is why we've improved operations at the VA and we've given them the resources to fill the promises we made to them. That just got it signed into law this week by President Trump. That's the story of this majority. On some areas, we've been phenomenally successful. In other areas, we're still working toward the ultimate goal. But make no mistake, our leaders have stood with you and we are fighting on the right side of important and ethical issues of our time. And I gotta tell you, a Catholic boy seeing a bunch of nuns in the audience, <laughs> nothing is more dear to us than the cause of life. So thank you. Your hard work has secured important victories that we have sought for decades. Here's just one example. In the House, we passed Micah's Law, which would ban abortion at 20 weeks when unborn babies can feel and recognize pain. You know why we did that? Because we know humanity shines the brightest when we're standing up for those who are suffering and when we are protecting those who cannot protect themselves. <laughs> but beyond that, Beyond the policies and the initiatives, you have built this beautiful pro-life movement. It is a movement based on love. It's a movement based on dignity. It's a movement based on inclusion. You know, I tried to honor this work by inviting Kathy DiCarlo to be one of my guests at this year's State of the Union. You, you need to meet Kathy DiCarlo. As a nurse in Brooklyn, the hospital that Kathy worked at, it wanted to force her to assist with a late-term abortion force her to do it. Because of her religious beliefs, she, of course, objected. And the hospital threatened her with disciplinary action. And in the face of this, Kathy DiCarlo stood strong. 
She didn't give in, and she fought for the religious rights that this country guarantees her. Hospital eventually changed their policy, and now Kathy, she is a nationwide advocate for religious freedom, standing up for what others in the medical industry in that industry face is an unjust dilemma. Those are the kind of people that America produces, and we need to keep highlighting their courage. We need to keep standing up for our constitutional right to religious freedom and conscience. As we think about the people who inspire us, we have to remember that there are those who want to strip away our accomplishments. We have to remember that that's why this year's midterm elections are so important. We know how hard we've worked for this majority and how we're going to keep moving things in the right direction, but we cannot let this opportunity slip away. We're going to keep racking up wins, but they want to take it all away. In the House, the Democrats have already promised to pursue a litany of far-left ideas that could jeopardize our religious rights, infringe on our personal liberties, raise our taxes, reduce our military, you name it. We need to match and exceed their energy. For so many elections, we outworked them because we could stand the tide of their bad proposals. We energized, we won the House in 2010, we won the Senate in 2014, we won the White House in 2016. And now we need to outwork them so we can build on that groundswell of success that we're having. We need this coalition to meet that challenge. That's where we are. People in this room know that the road to the majority never ends. And if we put the same energy to defending our principles as we gave in the past years, I know we will succeed. We're on the right side. And it will be the American people who are better off because of it. So it's real simple. Let's get to work. Let's win this election. Let's continue on our mission to bring more opportunity, more prosperity, and more freedom to this country that we all care about so passionately. And finally, as a person who has watched this movement, grew up in this movement, it's exciting. Thank you. We all have taken on a vocation to make America better. And we, each generation, each generation has this responsibility. And it has been the honor of my lifetime to walk in this journey with each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless. Thank you so much.